Hi, I'm Ilana Jassy. And I'm Andy Jassy. And we are the sponsors and creators of the Civil Rights Trail Trip for Garfield students. We got this idea after reading Brian Stevenson's book, Just Mercy. And Ilana and I were pretty inspired by it and went to Montgomery, Alabama and to Selma. And we thought that it might be really interesting to bring this experience back to students at Garfield High School, where both of our kids went to public high school. And we thought that it would be really interesting for kids to better understand their heritage and the history of black people in this country and bring it back to the community at Garfield High School. Yeah, so we took a, a really good long trip down the East Coast. We went to Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Georgia, and Montgomery, Alabama. We did tours of some of the places where we got to kind of get to know the city, and some of them were more focused on like the kind of information that the cities could provide for us. Yes, it is my first airplane flight. I was super nervous like the first couple of days like before the flight, but when I got on the flight I was getting really excited. Hi, my name is Hana. I'm class of 2025 um, and today is day two of the Civil Rights Trail Trip. We're gonna be walking, they said to expect about like a mile or two. So yeah, I got my shoes ready, I'm ready to walk. We're going to the museum, I believe, and we're gonna just look at like a lot of important people in like civil rights history. Hi, I'm Lauren Davis, I'm class of 2024, and we're at the African American Museum in DC, Washington. Like when I walked in for the first time, I was like, oh, this is like super sweet. It looked really modern and like very airy and like soft. But then like as soon as we started going down into like the actual like museum, I guess, there was definitely like a change of like feelings because it got like a lot darker and then like just the monotone and like the projections of the images and stuff, it kind of made it really like serious. Starting from the bottom, it was really hard. I was just like irritated. I was like, I don't want to take no pictures of this, but I did because I, yeah. you know, like it's important to do that. I didn't know how many slaves were in the Atlanta slave trade. Like right. they, were, they were showing us that video when we, when we first walked in, and it said like 12 million 500,000. That's a lot of people, so I was just trying to wrap my head around it. Yeah, I definitely want to come back to like where it talks about the black musicians and like the different like prominent figures and like in the civil rights movement because yeah. I feel like I stayed on the parts where it was like the struggles and like misery, but like I didn't get to the like progressive parts. So. Yeah, I'm not a very big museum person, you know. So like today, me like really enjoying it, really showed me how like really good that museum is. I want to, you know, know more about black inventors because usually when I think of like famous black people, we think of like athletes and like mm -hmm. entertainers and stuff. So I want to know more on the, That's cool. you know, inventor side as well. His group of here, and I don't know about you guys, but when we started on the basement level. Learning all about how we got here, our history, how all of that works to becoming not only having a black president, but also having something that commiserates all the loss, all the like struggle, the sacrifice, and it's all right here. It's going to remain here. It's a pretty big deal. And it was actually one of the first kind of larger federal acknowledgements to the protest that were going on in 2020. Trip. I think I'm really excited to see Howard because I'm really interested in pursuing a medical career and I know that they have a really good um, medical facility and like stuff for like pre-med students and stuff so I'm excited to like see the campus.
the stuff where he was talking about is actually really cool and it's really fast and it'll get you right there to the monument. It's going to be right here. are in DC right now um, but we're about to leave this is our last day um, but before that we're gonna go to the Capitol um, and it is February 21st it was our I think it was our either our state senator or our congressperson like I like seeing you know, who's really making the decisions for our people, you know, like because every single state was there, so it was nice to see Washington's. I don't really, I didn't really know much about the Capitol or anything about what it looked like, so I definitely was introduced to that. We're coming for you, Alabama. Hello, my name is Suzanne Lacey, and I'm the executive director of Museum Without Walls. Museum Without Walls is the organization that decides on which history uh, will be studied on the Civil Rights Trail trip. We assist in pre-trip education, and we do all the logistics and facilitation um, when we're on the trip. We made it. Mm, probably how quiet it was for the first one. Like, Seattle's so busy and there's always this noise, but like, you can just walk in the street and no cars would hit you or you would just like kind of have a peaceful place. There's just like a really bad like view of Alabama from here. I mean politically still that still like makes sense but like it's actually a really beautiful place and I didn't expect that. I mean you can't walk down the street in downtown Montgomery without coming upon some form of history. Uh, Alabama just gave me something I've never ever seen before and taught me about something I've never really heard about in depth at all. It was sunny for the most part, which we didn't have a lot of that because it was winter time when we went on the trip. 
and I really appreciated that. And also how much history there was, like there were so many landmarks and like every place was having like the sign that was telling you how important it was in its history. So everybody spent the night last night, is that how this went? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, and this your first stop for the day? Yes, ma'am. Ooh, uh, 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 uh. That means we're getting ready to start this day off right. Setting the moon? Yes. During the Montgomery Bus boycott, there were many songs that we would sing. Anybody know? I woke up this morning with the mind. <laughs> Stay, come on, jump in here. Oh, Jesus. Yes, I woke up this morning with my mind. The first worship service was held here in the sanctuary. Of course, they didn't have standing on the pew, you know, they didn't come to like the 40s. This when Dr. King came, they had padding on the pews, but they were powder blue. Mm -hmm. Montgomery and uh, Mayor Stephen Reed is he turned 49 years of age yesterday and so happy birthday Mayor Stephen Reed he's our first African-American mayor oh. all of the, as we move around the city you're gonna see all these white buildings many of them are state buildings but the ones that have the lime green top like that lime green one down there these are the retirement systems of Alabama meaning people who retired from the state workers on our left are uh, owned by Dexter Church. And this is the minister's house right here. Everybody, this is Mrs. Rosa Parks' apartment. She lived here from 1951 to 1957 with her husband, Raven Parks. Plaza in 1955. It was a bus stop where the little lady with the red hat is sitting. That was a bus stop that said colored and white. And that's where Mrs. Parks boarded the bus and the bus turned that corner onto Montgomery Street and, and went and stopped in front of um, the, what is now Rosa Parks Library Museum. I feel like blackface impacted me the most. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, because when I first seen it, it was like, I felt like a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. And like, also it kind of like promoted like stereotypes and racism. Like when you think about like our black history and like the things that we had to like fight for, it's actually kind of recent. You guys were just talking about the Kardashians and mm -hmm. stuff. Like they copy what we do, but right. when we like, when we do it, we're like, we get hated for it. That moment, I was like, it made me realize right. we're still, this is very recent yeah. and like we have to continue. Obviously, I knew nothing about why it was called Jim Crow and then afterwards, I, now I know like the basic story and I'm a lot more informed by that. Like Rosa Parks on the bus and that scene, I noticed how like it was against the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So like it impacted me because it shows like even though there's laws put in place 
that are supposed to seem like it supports us, they don't always do that. They go through segregation all day, like they can't drink from different water fountains mm -hmm. and go in certain places, but a simple bus ride is what's hardest for them. If I'm thinking about myself in Rosa Parks Place, I can imagine sitting at first and thinking, no, I'm not gonna get up even if he tells me to. Cause I can imagine even black people were like, on the bus were like, just get up. Just get up, yeah. cause we don't wanna see that. Like, we don't wanna see you getting injured and we also, we don't want trouble, right? I, I do not think I'd be able to do what she did, but boycotting, yeah. We went to the Legacy Museum as well as the Peace and Justice Memorial today. And ultimately that museum helped frame how basically slavery has evolved over the years into mass incarceration. In the Legacy Museum specifically, I like wrote the most notes for sure. I think what stood out to me was like how enslaved people were compared or like seen as animals by their captors. Two million people died during the Atlantic slave trade coming from Africa to Northern America. Two million people died during that process either through suicide or starvation or being killed on those boats. That impacted me because, well, most of the people here, our ancestors, had endured all of that pain. Have They stayed strong and they continued to fight. And now we're here today and we're living on their legacy. It was just really shocking how like slaves at any time could be exploited by their enslavers by raping or killing. It just made me realize like, the slave owners, like, they didn't care. That impacted me because I know it would be hard for me to, like, not see my family. So we know about, like, all these different things, but, um, just about, like, how slavery kind of relates to the school-to-prison pipeline. kind of had me question about, like, the different things that we're learning in, like, school and stuff. And, like, should I even really be paying attention in class? Because, like, I feel like maybe they're just, like, sugarcoating it. It taught me about how, like, Emancipation wasn't like complete emancipation, and I didn't know that before, and they don't really teach us that here, so. Uh, Urban League's involvement with the Civil Rights Trail trip is that we help with the uh, application process, uh, but we sort of organize the interviews uh, for the students in the building at Garfield High School. Like I said, we also uh, fund the Atlanta portion. We are the liaisons for this trip, so we help coordinate along with the Museum Without Walls, some activities and college visits um, that go along with the trip. I woke up at like 5 a.m., had to get ready. We left, we left the hotel from Montgomery, 6 a.m. I knocked out on the bus, so you know, time went by pretty fast, so you know, it wasn't that bad for me. People always talk about Atlanta, but like we really got to see it and I appreciated how cool it was and how many people who look like me were there. Also the HBCUs, like that was one of the biggest ones for me, you know, getting to see colleges and some places I really might want to go to when I get older. Good morning, everyone. My name is Knightley. I'm a mass media arts major from Philadelphia, PA. And on behalf of our president, Dr. George P. French Jr., I would like to welcome you all to Clark Atlanta University. I always wanted to know more about HBCU, so that's what, that's what I'm looking forward to, Atlanta. Locker room. 
this segment of the trip, we in uh, Clark, Atlanta. Awesome. Good stuff. We just HBCU. hit the HBCU. And God, we just like the, uh, yeah. Yeah. hit the 40-yard dash on him real quick. You know, he was getting scattered by, like, you know, the, the mm. coaches and stuff like that. We got a whole little tour. You know what I'm saying? So, all of us going D2 right now. We went to the basketball game. I know that's not really part of the trip, but like it was really, really cool to be able to see the game how it was. And like we saw celebrities there, so that was awesome. We saw Drewski. We went on a bus tour in Atlanta that kind of taught us about the history of Atlanta and like the different neighborhoods and the different cities. And I think that's a really important like community perspective and like historical perspective of how that affected different areas specifically because we learned about the history of different places and how that tied into the civil rights movement. And so Atlanta has a lot of really important history in it that is essential to learning. I love looking at architecture and things like that, especially like old houses and things. And that was really cool to just like see all around everywhere. I wish we had more time so I could like walk around. I learned a lot of things like I really pride myself on knowing my own black history and it's like one of my favorite topics period but I learned so many new things. I feel inspired to keep learning new things and like it's like there are endless amounts of knowledge to go and discover. At first like I went through like a series of emotions like I was angry and then I was sad but it's like taking in it it's kind of like my body I'll see is at peace. Like, I, I, I feel like I gain knowledge from uh, understanding all this and, you know, learning new topics and about lynching and all that. I feel like I gain knowledge, but it doesn't, it doesn't make my, it doesn't make, like, my soul as angry or sad anymore. Like, it just kind of, I don't know, it fluctuates my brain and gives me more understanding of what I got to do and more of what we all need to do as far as in change and peace. I definitely have a deeper understanding of American history and I have a deeper understanding of my interest in it, I guess. I never was a history person, but like after learning about how directly it impacts today, it's very like, I don't know, I don't mind as to how interesting it is. Being surrounded by like such rich history and like a perspective of it that I didn't get to experience in school um, was just really, it was really nice to see that and to take it in. It's really important to expand your knowledge about the civil rights history because it definitely does change the way you view certain things. I feel like going on this trip, it really gave me facts like how severe things was 
for my for uh, my ancestors and stuff. I was relieved that we came from such harsh times, and now we're in a space where it, where we where we can like thrive a little bit more. And it made me really look at the world in a different point of view. Like I'm gonna tell my friends about like the good experiences that I had and some of the bad ones too. If you want to meet new people and experience new things, this is definitely a great trip to go on to. You know, there's downtime, you'll get to meet new people. I've made new friends because of the trip and you'll just experience so much.